On this episode of Pedalox, I'm going to add a lot more shape to the body of the car and add some things that are really good. Yes, this is something I've been looking forward to for quite a while and I've been worrying about it in equal measure because now I have to decide what the front of the car is going to look like. When I added these arches on, it's really exacerbated the problem of the rain well that collects water in the front of the car and these arches aren't strong enough to support anything across the top. So I'm going to have to build some bodywork or at least some framework for the bodywork to try and hold it up a little bit better. But before we get onto that, there is another noticeable change you'll have probably spotted. Now you'll recognise these as the wheels we've had on the car all the way through the build. These are from a Mark 1 Audi TT, they're a 9 spoke and the biggest problem with them, besides being a little bit narrow for what we want, is they are heavy. These weigh about 23.5 kilos with the tyre and they're the heaviest wheels that were ever put on the Mark 1 TT. Now we're fairly limited in a 5x100 fitment, but with a spacer and adapter we can fit these on. These are 18 by 10 J's from a Porsche 930 and 964 era 911 turbo. And they fit really, really nicely. It's one of the reasons I was squeezing the suspension in a little bit to try and make it work. And with the spacer on, they just poke a little bit of shoulder out past the edge of the arch. So it should fit really, really nicely. Now these 10J wheels are lighter than these ones. In fact, the 10Js are roughly the same weight as these, but obviously two inches wider. The ones at the front are eight and a half J and they're a kilo and a half lighter than these. So all round, we've saved about three kilos of weight just in unsprung mass alone. Now the first part we're going to add is some lateral stability onto this outside edge. It moves around quite a bit at the moment because it's just connected at each end. So we're going to go from the very apex here down onto the main part of the chassis. Now doing that will form the inside edge of our inner arch here, going from the lights back towards this part of the chassis. Now the roll cage is going to come down from here and this is going to form kind of a big well in the middle, exactly where all the rainwater has been collecting, but it'll be a lot easier to prevent that happening with some more structure in. After that I'm going to change part of the back end of this front arch so that we can join it into the chassis here off the edge of the roll cage. Now this is going to come across and be done in one inch tubes, I'm actually going to remove a piece of the original arch but we'll build a little bit of the structure first. Now we've got the outer edge of the arch laterally stabilised, we can look at what we're going to do to replace it. So I'm going to cut it around about here and fit this piece of one inch tube. That's going to come up from the floor to around here. This piece is going to go absolutely dead vertical and this is going to form the front edge or the rear edge of the front clamshell on the car. So this is going to come up but it's not going to be the same height as the front arch, it's going to dip down a little bit to be level with this dash bar. And the bar is going to be extended out again in inch just like that. So here's our nearly finished article. I've cut this end down so it will fit roughly onto the end of here. I'm not 100% sure that it's going to fit perfectly and it's probably going to need some work just to try and make it fit a little bit better. And at this end, I've also cut out this quarter, the lower quarter here of the tube, so that we can actually slot it over the top of this and this line will run really nicely down into the edge of here and continue down the edge of the car. So that's what we need to do. We just need to chop this one out and then replace this one in just about there. And hopefully if my angles are alright, this will be dead vertical when I'm done. Now I've got the outer wing framework in, there's one more piece of support we need to add. Just to stop this from flexing side to side, I'm going to put this piece of inch tube in from the lower suspension mount at the very back of the swing arm 
onto the inside edge of this corner. This gives us a nice big triangular structure under here, really good brace, and we can mount all of our inner wing structure off this as well. So this really finishes off this section and adds a huge amount of strength laterally to the car. At the rear of the car, we want to be considering some of the lines that we set up with the wing. So I've taped on this piece of inch box to give me a nice reference line all the way down in the same angle from this structure down to the rear arch. And I've also put in the intercooler pipework because whatever we build across the top of here has to clear all of that. So this is temporarily fixed in and I'll come back to that properly in another episode. I'm going to build this out of inch tube, the same as I did with the structure at the front, and that's just going to sit dead vertical up that side and go across here and down in line with this vertical member that sits behind the intercooler from the original chassis. I'm just going to join these with some 45 degree slash cuts, which will meet up nicely and do exactly what we need them to do. Be a nice, quick, easy fix to put in, and anything else we add can easily be attached to it. I'm going to weld this up into one piece in the garage though, and then fit it onto the car. This is a little bit easier and cooler than welding out here. So here's the rear stay all welded up and we can fit this on exactly above this vertical stay from the original chassis like that. Now I've got this magnet position so the inside edge is actually dead in line with that rather than the outside edge because it does dip in slightly in the middle. So with that one in place there, we can now measure across from this side down using this little extension and then line up this end similarly so that it is completely parallel, or rather not parallel, tangential. So now we've got this aligned, we can put the straight edge from the front wing back on and make sure that this is all level with the line of our wing. And that looks pretty good. It looks like it's still the right height shaved this down a couple of times to make sure that it stays at the same level and this is also completely level across the top as well so we'll weld this in and then start adding on the pieces to join into the rear arch behind me well as you can see quite a lot of stuff has happened i've added quite a lot of metal onto the back of the car and built these arches out all the way to the back so we'll take a quick look around and show you the process of what i went through to get this made because unfortunately i just wasn't able to make this design this and document it in a coherent fashion at the same time so do a quick look around and see where we're up to and then continue on with a few more of the simpler bits that we can actually progress through next and there's some cool stuff coming up so we'll start at the front end of the wing here, and this fairly rigid section is essentially going to be a bomb plate so that you can sit on here and slide in and out of the car, because otherwise, if you're sitting on this structure, this might bend, because it is fairly soft tube, this definitely won't. So that comes out from there, and the body line comes straight up across the top of the arch here. This framework is for the very edge of whatever body we end up having to put in around the top of the car and the roll cage, but this just comes across the inside. We've got the completed inner arch structure on the inside of here, and then this moves onto the back of the car, and we've added a load more stuff around there, but I'm going to take you around the back, and I'll show you that from there. Now finally on the very back part of the arch this just comes down and slopes a lot more gently than at the front but it comes off to a fully square back and this is where the lights will be and everything else so this will ostensibly be the very back edge of the car probably with a little ducktail spoiler just sitting on the back here so we need to finish building that we need to join between the two in some sort of re removable manner because we want to be able to make sure we can get the engine in and out easily which is why this bumper bar just bolts 
on and off. So we've got a little bit of structure we need to add, which goes from the top here around and down so that this can still bolt in and out, but we have a, a complete edge around here. From there, we also need to work out what we're going to do with the front of the car a little bit more and start building some lines across there. And that's had a lot of thought put into it over the last couple of weeks, a lot of which I haven't recorded because it would just be me sat there scratching my head and going, um... Well, that's not that interesting. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. So it's been a little bit of time between our updates, but we have got a lot more work coming and we have done a lot more to the car in the last six or so weeks. If you'd like to check out shop.pedalbox.show, you can buy these t-shirts in gray and black and long sleeve variants, as well as our new fun is better than good t-shirt, which is currently on pre-order. We've also got beanies and hoodies, so get ready for winter. And if you'd like to support us directly, check out patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. If you like this episode, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.